question for you. Have you ever been, and I don't need any hands, okay, but have you ever been betrayed, misused, or abused? If you've been living at all in this sin-cursed world, I would guess to one degree or another we've all felt that. I understand whatever you've gone through, what seemed to be more intense than what anybody else has ever gone through. But most of us have gone through it. But if you're not careful, friends, you can allow that mistreatment to define you. Oh, I'm an abused housewife, or I was mistreated as a child, or I am misunderstood, I am bullied, whatever it is, you've been betrayed, I have suffered these things. You become a bitter person, not just angry about what happened, but just angry, angry at everything. angry with your oppressor, constantly seeking reassurance and affirmation from others, completely defined by what happened to you. Then we have this problem, the problem of what Jesus says. We talked about this in Sunday school, and by the way, if you could have been here for Sunday school, you weren't teaching, but just catching up on sleep, I think you missed something because we got some, uh, we got some extra stuff in Sunday school getting us ready for this message this morning. I want you to think about this. Jesus commanded us to forgive. Now that's difficult, especially when we have sometimes a misconception about what forgiveness is. You hear it said so often, you would swear it was in the Bible. Forgive and forget. Do you know that that's not in the Bible? That's not in the Bible any more than God helps those who help themselves. You know that's not in the Bible either, amen? How do we forgive? Someone has done something, if, if I'm counseling someone who, who was betrayed in the, in, in the most horrible way imaginable by relatives growing up, a little girl, Expose the things never should have been. How do you forgive that? How do you say that's okay and it never happened? How do you do that? I think the first thing is that's not forgiveness. We're going to talk about what true forgiveness is. Forgiveness is never saying that's okay. So a lot of times we apologize, and we actually, and we kind of hurt our kids too, uh, I'll just tell you. If you, you teach your kids to apologize, and somebody apologizes to you, and often it is our custom to say, oh, that's okay. No, it's not okay. You did something that you need to be forgiven for, and so that's not okay. The proper response is, I forgive you. To forgive someone is not to say, oh, what you did is okay, or to say it doesn't matter, or to say, 
I'm going to forget about it. To forgive somebody is something a little different, and I'll talk about that in a minute. To forgive someone is to release your claim, rightful claim, of retribution on that somebody, and to say that's up to you and God, and now my role is to seek your good. It's not, though, to say I trust you. Not yet. It's not to restore to a place of vulnerability, not yet. But it is to release that bitter anguish burning inside of you that says, I've been hurt and I want to hurt them back. You release that. We're going to talk about this today. There's a lot to be said. You know, in, in today's society, we talk a lot about somebody's past. Folks make lots of money, secular counselors, trying to therapize folks, helping them deal with their past. Generally, the secular counselors, what they do is they say, that it's okay that you're acting like a child and a spoiled brat because you were abused in the past. <laughs> it's not Bible, amen? That's true, right? Amen? Okay. Stay with me. Today, we're going to study one of the greatest stories of reconciliation in the Bible. We're going to take several weeks to get through it. I don't want you to think about what happened. If you're not familiar with the story, let me catch you up a little bit. Boy, if there's anybody that should have a broken psyche, it would be Joseph. I mean, you think about it. Joseph should be in therapy for the rest of his life. He was the youngest brother of 12. Now, for, for some folks, that would be enough to make it, put him in therapy already. Amen? I was the youngest. Okay. Well, he was a guy. He was the youngest of 12, and he was hated by his brothers. I'm not talking about he stole my ice cream hated. I'm not talking about he short-sheeted my bed kind of hated. Not even talking about he killed my dog kind of hated, which is bad. I'm talking about I was thrown in a pit. They were going to kill me. Then they sold me to slavery. And then they told my dad I was dead kind of hated. Man, do you think that might break you? Oh, yeah. You think that might make you bitter at your brothers? Could. Your brothers mistreat you like that? Did he deserve it? No. So now he goes to Potiphar. The Lord blesses him. He uh, now is approached by Potiphar's wife to commit adultery. He takes a stand. I'm not going to do that. So he gets thrown in jail and falsely accused of trying to rape her when he was trying to avoid anything wrong. Do you think that that might make you angry and bitter? Who caused all that? Well, I'm brothers that brought me to this place. Now, well, while I was in jail, in dungeon. Somebody had a dream. Hey, God interprets dreams, and I happen to know God. Let me talk to God for you. And so he does. He interprets the dreams. He said, just when you go back to the king, you go back to Pharaoh, let him know I'm in here and I shouldn't be, okay? Joseph thought maybe at this time he's going to get out. Guess what? Two more years. And he rots there in the prison. 
All of this time he could have been saying, man, my brothers did this to me. Oh, I can't wait. If I ever got my hands around their scrawny little neck, Vengeance. Now, many of us, we know better than to say, okay, God, let me wring their neck. It'll be wonderful. We generally don't pray like that. But sometimes we pray like this. God, you saw what they did. Burn them in their shoes. <laughs> now, we might not say that, but we think that. And that is the opposite of forgiveness. Forgiveness says, you know what? I release my rightful claim of retribution. And I'm done with that. Not saying that what they did was right. Not saying yet that they can be trusted. But see, if he was constantly angry and bitter, God couldn't have blessed him. He would, be, he would have not been able to have been blessed in Potiphar's house. He would not have been blessed in the prison. He would not be able to now stand before Pharaoh and help him with Pharaoh's dream. Finally, he was brought out of prison two years after he thought he was going to get out, and he was brought before Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a dream, and, Pharaoh, and the deal was, look it, you're going to have seven good years. You're going to have seven bad years. Get ready during the good years uh, because famine is coming. And so they stored a bunch of food, and guess what? Now we have the seven bad years, and people are out of food, and so all over the region, people are coming to get food. Guess who shows up? The brothers. Now, Joseph is second in command. If Joseph says die, they died. Joseph could have done anything that he wanted to them. What he does, we're going to study this week, next, maybe, maybe three weeks. We'll see how it goes. We're going to see some interesting things here. Let me just say just a little bit more about forgiveness, and we're going to get into what Joseph did. Forgiveness, once you release your rightful claim of retribution, you avoid a spiritual cancer known as the root of bitterness. If you can keep your finger here and flip to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15, this will give us a little bit of understanding here. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby you may be defiled. Joseph had resolved this bitterness in his heart way long before these men showed up. And we get a little glimpse of that fact. We'll read ahead a little bit. Let's go to Genesis chapter 15, 50, 5 0. Genesis chapter 50, in verse 15. Let me show you something. This is when his brothers realize, oh man, Joseph knows who we are. We know who he is now. Our dad is dead. I think he's going to kill us because we deserve it. Verse 15. And when Joseph's brethren saw their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us with all the evil which he did, which we did unto him. Now, again, that's retribution. That's do, by the way, do they deserve to be burned in their shoes? Oh, yeah. 
Did what they do, was what they did okay? No way. They sent a messenger to Joseph saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say to Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. Now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of their servant, servants of God thy father. Um, and Joseph wept, and they spake unto him. These scoundrels even said that their dad said something that I don't think he said. Still not quite right, these guys. But verse 18, or verse 19. Now look it, because this gives us an idea of what forgiveness is. Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Guys, years ago, I forgave you, meaning... I released this. This is God's issue with you, not mine. I've released my claim of retribution. Now, if God's going to deal with you, fine. If not, fine. I seek your good. I am not seeking your anguish. That, by the way, is why he didn't burn up in Potiphar's house. That's why he didn't self-destruct in self-pity. That's why he didn't lose it while he was in the prison and he was able to be a minister to others. Why? Because it was not consumed with anger, bitterness, and self-loathing and feel sorry for himself because he had released it. God is right. And this is up to God. So he'd already done that. Now, because he had done that, God was able to set up a providential test. So we're going to go back to Genesis 42. In verses 1 through 9, we read it today, we found that God set up something interesting. So now, after all of these years, God sets up a famine to bring Joseph and his brothers back together. Hmm. Now, I believe that that was set up because he was already, he had already released his right of retribution, and now God is giving the brothers a chance to, to grow here. It does, you know, I can tell you anecdotally that I believe very often when we get offended, when we get the opportunity to forgive, release that, bring it back, God still loves the offender too, doesn't he? Amen? You know what? The offender needs to be corrected. And very often... God will bring the offender and the offended back together. Hmm. Now what? Well, if the offended is all about retribution, the offender cannot be helped. And the offended will remain hurt. But if the offended can release. Now the offender can be dealt with specifically. So now, here comes the brothers. An interesting thing happens. Joseph sees the brothers and immediately recognizes them. They didn't recognize him. Immediately, he remembers the dream. Remember, he had a dream. This is what got him in trouble in the first place. He had a dream that looked prophetically like eventually his brothers and his parents would be bowing down to him. He's like, this is it. Because here he was. 
He was the guy in charge of all of the food over the land, and the people had to come to him for food if they, if they were hungry. They needed to come to him. And so here they came, and they did obeisance, and they, and they bowed in front of him like a great ruler that he was. And he said, there it is. Those dreams were true. And so now he could go in two directions. He could say, I'm going to get him. But he didn't do that. Why? Because he had released that years ago. That's why he was comfortable in his own skin. So now he says, okay, I want to learn some things. See, forgiveness is commanding. I did that. Trust is earned. Let's see what these guys are made of. So the first thing he did was, and he did this all through an interpreter. He didn't speak their language. He spoke in the Egyptian language, and he hollered out and barked out orders, and he said, you guys are spies. No, 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 we're not spies. Falsely accused him to see what was going to happen. All right. So what we find now, for, forgiveness is commanded, trust is earned. Trust is tense, tested when you're searching for the truth. Look at verse 9. And Joseph remembered the dreams when he dreamed, at which he dreamed uh, of them and said unto them, you're spies. You see the nakedness of the land you're come. He said, nay, my Lord, but to buy fruit are thy servants come. We're all one man's sons, and are true men. Thy servants uh, are no spies. He said to him, and he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land you are come. And he said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. Behold, the youngest is uh, today with our father, and one is not. And Joseph said unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby shall you be proved. By the life of Pharaoh shall uh, ye not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Well, what was all that about? God's given wisdom to expose some character here. First thing he wanted to see is he wanted to see, would they lie now? By the way, when someone comes back now, you've already released your claim of retribution, but now they're back in your life. What do you want to do? Well, again, you're not about retribution, but you want to see how far can you let them back in your life. First thing you need to do is see how much of the truth are they going to tell? If they're only confessing to what they know you know, it might not be wise to let them all the way in. What do you think? Does that mean you don't forgive them? No. You forgive them, you don't trust them. So he's waiting to see. Let's see, what are they going to say? Well. He told them the whole story. Okay. Now, how are they treating the younger brother? See, Benjamin now is the youngest. He remembers it being the youngest. It was rough to be the youngest. Was that wrong? Huh? Oh, Benjamin was always the youngest. Yes. So now, how's he being treated now, now that uh, Joseph's not around? Let's see. Bring him here. If they were not to be trusted, they would be quick to throw him under the bus. So we're going to test this. We're going to look at it. Next. See, we're going to see, and next week we're going to see how this goes even further. Trust is tested when guilt is confronted. So he does several things. He uh, throws them in prison, and they look into each other, and they say, you know what? This is because of what we did to Joseph. 
They had to face it. To get to restoration, to get back to that place of trust, you may have forgiven them in your relationship to them, that, to God, okay, but now they're coming back to your life. The, they need to come to that point where they face what they did and call it sin. We are guilty. This is coming on us. You know what? The law of sowing and reaping is a law that is not broken. Amen? It happens. But when somebody genuinely starts to see that what's happening to them is because this is what they did. It's not because of something you did to them, but they're starting to own, oh, these bad things are happening because of the bad thing I did. Okay, now we're starting to see some restoration. There is a warning sign that we see here, and again, next week we're going to get into much more detail. But Reuben's not quite right yet. He's got some issues. Let me show you this in verse, where am I? Verse 22. Reuben answered them, Speak I not unto you, do not this sin against the child? And you would not hear, behold, and therefore behold, also his blood is required. <laughs> so Reuben's saying, I told you not to do this. Um, Reuben, you were in on it. You didn't want him to kill it. But you were in on this whole uh, selling him into slavery thing. A lot of times when somebody starts coming back and starts to confront the issues that they've done, you're going to find a cover your tail mentality. 